Okay, so tonight what I'm going to do is do a quick live uh, kind of discussion. I put up a video earlier today where I discussed the new uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, the beta, where it has a new built-in pop-out window management uh, I don't know if system is the right word, but where basically it memorizes where you leave your pop-out windows. For those of us that use uh, external displays with things like Real Sim Gear and, uh, of course, Air Manager, which is the one that I kind of focus on the most. And, you know, one of the big problems with uh, the current or the previous setup was that you had to set that up every time. And then they kind of built in their own version similar to what X-Plane has. Not the same, but similar. Well, a, a developer wrote an excellent program called the Pop-Out Panel Manager um, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I did a video on it. It's a great, a great program. And so in my video today, I had mentioned that with my testing, I couldn't get the two to work together. Well, come to find out, it's been pointed out to me, that there's a new version out and it does work with the beta uh, version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And so what I want to kind of do is go over that and kind of show that. And uh, there's a, still a couple of areas that, uh, that are kind of sketchy or that's not the right word, but just don't, don't work well together. And I think at the end of this, it's going to come down to uh, kind of picking one over the other, and then there's still going to be a couple of situations that are going to make it difficult. So what I'm going to do now is pull up a... Hey, I see you there. Um, yeah, stick around, uh, Joe, I'm, in case I say something stupid. Uh, that's a guarantee, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen back to this version like I had earlier today. Mo the, the bulk of that video is still accurate. There's just the pop-out panel manager part that needs to be discussed. So here you see the inside of the 172 with the G1000 setup. And what I'm going to do is I am going to set up using the new pop-out panel manager. I am going to uh, uh, set this up and then show you that it does work, but there's going to be some caveats to that. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to call up the program. And this is version 3.4.6. And this will only work with the current beta version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you try to run 3.4.6 with the non-beta version, it will not work. At least that is my understanding. So I'm going to create a profile. I'm just going to call it 172. I'm going to kind of fly through this a little bit. Um, I, I go much more in depth into the video, and I'll put the, per, the description down below. So this is one you see it identifies the 172, and this is one of those ones where it needs to have the power applied. So there's that, and I'm going to start the panel selection. I'm going to click that. It's going to shrink down. And I'm going to set up my view. I'm going to do Control-Alt-0. And that saves this particular view. And I'm going to click 1, 2. And then I'm going to Control-Left-Click. And that takes me out. And that there's my panels. So now I'm going to start the pop-out. And let's see if this works. Hopefully it will. Now, as you can see, these bottom two screens on the left and right are my external displays that I use for my air manager bezels. And there, I've already gone through this process once. And you can see here that worked. And let's just say for the sake of example, I'll go ahead and call it up. Let me call up. Uh, I'm going to shrink these down, though. And kind of move them out of the way because setting up the panel can be a little bit persnickety. Let me pull up Air Manager. 
and of course it's on the display that's not being used and let me start this one and this one and I will shrink that down and I will go ahead and kind of tuck that under there and move that there and then same for this guy bring it over here and I'm just kind of I'm not doing this exact I just want to get it for just demonstration so there so set up and if I wanted to, I could fine tune it up here, which is one of the great advantages of this over the current new system that Microsoft has just come out with. I mean, kudos to Microsoft for listening to the community and doing this. And so I, I, I think it's a, a big step forward. But for those of you have been that have been using pop-out panel manager, it, it may be more of a step back. So we'll just say that these are all fine. I'm going to lock the panels. And that'll go red. I'm going to hit restart. And I can go ahead and I'm going to start the pop-out process. And this should work. So that'll minimize. It'll change the view. Click, click. And we can see that it's all in place. And we get the notification. And so that worked. That worked perfectly. Whereas before... 3.4.6, if you were trying to do this with 3.4.5 of Pop-Out Panel Manager, it wouldn't work. Um, so the developer has really, you know, jumped in and very quickly, expeditiously um, addressed the issue, and, and now it works. And so, and again, what are the advantages to Pop-Out Panel Manager? Well, the first one is you can, you can tweak the position and the sizes. You can also, one of the cool things cool thing is let me pull this up i can go to preferences so here's some of the neat things i could have this to where you would it would start when microsoft start so that's cool it will automatically detect which aircraft you're entering and when you hit the start to fly you can set it toward this will all happen automatically you don't have to do or you, you have to do very little. And that's that's pretty cool. And then you can make it to where it'll minimize after it's done its routine. And then you can make it to where it'll exit out if you leave out of Microsoft Flight Center. That's all, that's all excellent work. So this is just kind of a demonstration to show that it does work. But there's a rub. And let me see if I can duplicate this. And... The problem is going to be, let's say, and it was something I mentioned in the other video. Let's say that, and I'm going to shrink this down. What if on my 172, what if I have some gauges, say, somewhere else? And let me just adjust that, and I'll show you what I mean if I can find it. There we go. So let me go to my primary flight display. And what if I had moved this over? Okay. And then in the process, move that over. Except now it's not going to let me. It's going to pop right there. Let me redo it. Uh, it's, it's not going to release it. Oh, yeah, it did. Perfect. So now that's there. And what if I had added a gauge or two in this space where the mouse is. Maybe I added uh, the uh, redundant uh, vacuum gauges, my backup gauges for the 172, and this is where I decided to put them. Okay, and now what I want to do is I am going to load up. I'm going to move this back. And I'm going to minimize that and I'm going to escape out and I'm going to go to main menu and hopefully it won't crash the desktop. It may. I've had two or three. This is my first experience with beta 
since it's been out, I've never done a beta, but this is my first one. But now I'm going to load up the DA62. Hit close. Same runway. And let's hit fly. And now what I'm going to do, once this loads up, um, let's see here. Here we go. And I'm doing all this on the fly, so excuse me if this is not rehearsed. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to hit the pop out. But look, it remembers it as if it were from the up from the Cessna 172. So if I alter this, let's say I alter this, close this out, and I uh, let's see, close this panel, close that out. And then reopen that panel. And now I'm going to go through the process of setting this back up using. So let me do my Control Alt Zero. That sets my view. Let me run. This is it detects it. It's a power on required. And I'm gonna start the panel selection. Click, click, control, left click, start the pop out. And it's gonna go by what it remembers from the previous, but I'm just going to move this to here because maybe I don't want, maybe this is exactly how I want it set up. I don't want extra gauges. I just want this. And I go ahead and hit lock panels and restart. Start the pop out process. Now let's watch what happens. If it does it the way I think it's going to do, it's going to look fine. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, here it did. Oh, it had some issues with this. That's because that was from a previous thing. Bottom line is the developer did do a good job of uh, making it to where it will still work. But the, the hiccup is that if you're playing, it uses the G-1000 and you have a second aircraft that you like to fly that also uses the G-1000, that what the new built-in Microsoft Flight Simulator pop-out window system does is it treats it the same. It's not a per-aircraft basis. So that's still going to be a hiccup. So if that doesn't apply to you, then you won't. it won't matter. But I actually do fly uh, this plane, Baron, which has a G-1000 system, the Baron 58, and the Cessna 172. And two of those are twins. And so some of the systems could be different for people. Now, as it happens, mine all look like this. I have it set up just like it is below, and that works for me just fine. But for other people, um, if, you're, if your bezels are in different locations, you're going to run into some problems. And again, I don't think there's a way for me to turn off the system that Microsoft implemented and which would not interfere with the pop-out panel manager. So what we have are two new sy are two systems, one that's been around for a little bit, one that's brand new. They now do play a little bit better together, but you're still going to run into some problems. And as Autopilot is pointing out, the developer is awesome, and he did react to this really quickly. So if you use his program, please... Uh, send this dude some, you know, some gratitude. He, he, he worked, all the developers do. So in any case, hopefully this was helpful 
And now, and to clarify the earlier video from today, in any case, if you have any question, please let me know. Let's see here. What is Joe saying? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know that there's a way to get around it, Joe. I, I, I mean, I can keep trying, but I I have not been able to make it per plane. Microsoft still does. I don't know if you just have to exit out a certain way, but it's it's one of those kind of things that it'll just be very easy to get confused. And I think in the meantime, my recommendation would be if you're using planes that use the same avionics, Keep them the same, even though it's different aircraft, until something gets figured out. Hopefully, they'll just add like a setting and make it to where you can turn it off and on or, or whatever. But in any case, hopefully this was helpful. And you guys have a good evening, and I will see.